This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. T. Before we proceed to the video, how about hitting the bell icon to get notified every single time we upload a new video. And hey, you can also check out our playlist on our channel for more awesome videos. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. Got it. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you all are doing fine. Welcome to Dr. T. And I hope my voice is properly audible in this video because in the last couple of videos, I was trying to switch uh, audio devices and I found out that the volume was really low and I was really irritated because I could not do anything to solve the problem. So in this video, we are going to cover chronic periodontitis. This is not going to be a very exhaustive literature or, you know, information about chronic periodontitis because there is so much to learn about it but in this video what we're gonna do we are going to see what is chronic periodontitis when do we actually say that it is chronic periodontitis and how do you you know differentiate it from aggressive periodontitis clinical features types and so on so let's proceed with the video okay so let us proceed to chronic periodontitis and before we do that smash that like button and do comment below it really motivates me to create more content for you all okay so let's proceed so let's have a look at the term chronic periodontitis so chronic here denotes that it is a slowly progressing disease okay it is slowly progressing disease and periodontitis already you must be knowing that it is inflammation of the periodontium Whenever we have itis, it denotes inflammation. So, periodontitis, inflammation of the periodontium. So, this disease is associated with three things. Okay. So, when a patient comes to you, if you have, if you find that he has dental plaque or if he has, you know, inflammation like gingival swelling or there is bleeding when you probe, that is bleeding on probing. And third is if you have attachment loss or alveolar bone loss. So if these three clinical features are present, this will direct us towards chronic periodontitis. We will have dental plaque. Then we'll have gingival swelling, bleeding on probing. And there will be attachment as well as alveolar bone loss. Now here I said that it is slowly progressing. But... Keep in mind that this could progress at a faster rate if we have certain systemic factors like diabetes mellitus or you know other factors like smoking. So this can alter the patient's immune response and this you know slowly progressing disease can in fact progress really at a faster pace. Now another question is that which age group is affected the most? So I am referring to Karanza and in Karanza it has been told that this is most frequently found in adults. But nevertheless it can also occur in children as well as in adolescents. Alright? Okay. So now from these three points we can come up to a definition of periodontitis, chronic periodontitis and that is it is an infectious disease resulting in inflammation within the supporting tissues of teeth, progressive attachment loss and bone loss. Now one more question is that is it only caused by dental plaque? And the answer is no. There could be systemic factors also that could lead to chronic periodontitis because it's all about you know impaired host immunity. When the immunity is impaired it can lead to periodontal destruction. So the conditions like cardiovascular disorders, diabetes mellitus, etc. can also be a cause of chronic periodontitis. And I think I've repeated the term chronic periodontitis like 100 times and it's kind of becoming monotonous here. But can I just say CP? Oh, we'll see. Another question is, what will the patient tell you? What will be his chief complaint? Or, or let's say, will the patient have some kind of pain in this problem? And the answer is usually the patient will not feel pain because it's a very slowly progressing disease, obviously. So most of the patient will be totally unaware that they have this condition. But initially in this condition, we have bleeding on probing. So the patient can come to you and say that I have bleeding when I brush my teeth 
or you know when I eat something so this could be his you know what he tells you also also since there is attachment loss so let me just draw teeth quickly now since there is attachment loss the patient can say that there are black triangles between his teeth so these are just the spacing you know when you have teeth like this there is triangular spacing in between them and obviously when there is attachment loss this area will be visible so this area is otherwise covered by interdental papilla but when there is attachment loss this area will kind of be visible also the patient can complain of sensitivity to hot and cold food obviously and if there is severe attachment loss there can be mobility tooth movement and also you know tooth loss so in these patients where we have advanced disease this can be associated with localized dull pain and this pain can also radiate to other areas also there could be food lodgement in this you know attachment loss and that could be very irritating or the patient can kind of feel itching or you know clogged something is clogged in his mouth so that could also be a symptom the patient will tell you now coming to the clinical feature so obviously you will find that there is plaque in calculus the gingiva will be red swollen and there will be loss of stippling now what is stippling this is orange peel appearance when you dry the gingiva with cotton but if you dry the gingiva with cotton and you don't find that orange peel appearance that means stippling is absent so in disease we have stippling absent when everything is normal when the gingiva is normal stippling is present keep that in mind there will be pocket formation bleeding on probing attachment loss everything i've told you before there will be bone loss there will be root fluctuation involvement there will be change in tooth position tooth loss all these things you can find in caranza and i think i've told most of them so we also go for dental radiograph where we actually check the extent of the bone loss and how do we check that we check the distance between the cemento enamel junction and the alveolar bone crest now one question is that how do you differentiate between aggressive and chronic periodontitis because because there are times when it gets difficult difficult for you to evaluate if it is aggressive or chronic because when the patient comes to you for the first time you actually don't know how long the patient has that condition it could be just yesterday that he has developed or months ago that he has developed so how do you actually find out so this could be checked at later point during the appointment so when the clinical features confuse you and you're not sure the subsequent clinical examination can help you you know clear your doubt whether it is chronic or aggressive because the next time the patient comes to you and you check it out and if the changes are very little compared to the previous visit you can say it is chronic but if the progression is quite faster you can just say that it is aggressive so you can check out the difference between the first visit and this visit also you can check the response of the therapy you have given to that particular case whether the disease responded to your treatment or it is resistant to your treatment so the, these clues can help you find out now before we end the video let me quickly tell you about the types of chronic periodontitis there are two types we have localized and we have generalized so localized we say it is localized when less than 30% of the sites show attachment and bone loss so when it is less than 30 it is localized and when it is more than 30 when the attachment or the bone loss it is more than 30 it is generalized chronic periodontitis so this was generalized and localized we also have mild moderate and severe periodontitis so this is based on the clinical attachment loss so let us see that okay so we have mild chronic periodontitis we have moderate CP and we have severe P <laughs> okay so mild chronic when no more than one or two mm of clinical attachment loss is there we call it mild when three to four mm of clinical attachment loss is there we say moderate CP and when five or more of clinical attachment loss is there we say it is severe P so this was in short about the chronic periodontitis or the CP I hope you found the video helpful and if yes, please support me by sharing the video, letting others know about Dr. T. Thanks for watching. Take care. Allah Hafiz.